intelligencesquared.com. Thanks for coming, everyone, and um, thanks to Intelligence Squared. Thanks, Hannah, for organising it. And we uh, are going to discuss the debate in the old-fashioned ding-dong manner, one for, once, one against, and then at the end, there will be time for you to ask questions to the panel before they get a summing up of the motion. So the motion tonight is whether or not the art market is the best judge of good art. Um, now, being an art critic, I would say that I was the best judge of art. <laughs> but I think we should find out what this art market fellow is all about. Now, he sounds rather good. He's supposedly worth about six billion euros in the UK um, sales alone every year. <clears throat> Although I don't know how much tax he pays on that. And we have at least 10 art fairs in the next two weeks to thank for him, as well as the auctions. Although there was a grumpy fellow, um, an artist by the name of Gerhard Richter this week, who claimed that it was absurd that in the middle of a banking crisis, his paintings might sell from anywhere between two and nine million pounds. But let's not forget where we are, in the house of uh, one of this country's most influential art collectors and uh, tastemakers, uh, inventor of the YBAs, etc. So, part of the question is, does the more money a work of art commands make it better? So, to help us answer this question, we have a um, very distinguished panel. But I'd like to find out from you, first of all, before we get going, quick show of hands, who thinks that the art market is the best judge of good art? Please put your hands up now. One, two, three, four. Yes? Okay. <laughs> so, I gather that... Um, and, and who wouldn't, who wouldn't agree? Come on. Okay. Uh, Charles Sartre said, could you all leave the building? <laughs> so, no. And I think in order to try and um, convince you otherwise, we have um, very esteemed... I'd like to invite uh, the first speaker up, please. Mm -hmm.